Well, hello again. It's Trudy here from Hot Patterns, and we have a sneaky little tutorial for you this time. I say little because this is a very, very easy garment. In fact, this is from one of our most recent patterns, the Fast and Fabulous Origami Knit Top. Now, before I get started with it, I want to briefly explain two things to you. One is, uh, we'll have a quick look at the top in a moment, and the other one is what the Fast and Fabulous thing is all about. We've only got a few patterns in this range. We've just got a few Fast and Fabulous at the moment. We will be adding more. But the whole point of them is this. Um, as sewers, we like to do the sewing thing. The sewing is fun, you know, the creative process is nice, but the truth is, <laughs> the real truth is, I'm shallow enough, and I'm pretty sure you are too, to just want something nice to wear. That's it, we don't care how we get there. And sometimes you just want something that's very quick and very simple. Now, with our Fast and Fabulous range, we've been very careful to choose things that are very quick to make, very simple to make, but that look really good. Because we've all seen so many uh, garments, you know, quick and easy garments, that are basically, I don't know, like a square with a hole in it or something, you put it over your head that's a poncho. Doesn't look good. It looks like a square of fabric with a hole in the head that you put over as a poncho. They look terrible. The whole point of these is they're supposed to look like really cool garments. That's what we've done. So, let me quickly show you a, a version of this one and I'm gonna show you how to make it. And honestly, uh, Including the cutting, 45 minutes soup to nuts, I promise you. I know because I've made a few of these already, it's really simple. So, let me quickly show you the top. You've got two versions with this one. You've got one with a, like a three-quarter length sleeve, because of course I like those, and we all love this sleeve coverage. And we've got a sleeveless one. This is the sleeveless version. You can see I've put a little sparkly brooch on there because you can't have too many sparkly brooches, in my humble opinion. Um, and it's kind of asymmetric. Um, if you had, if we had an arm in this stand, then it'd be it'd be hanging off the shoulder properly, but we don't. Now, what I've done with this one is I've put it on top of a camisole because it may well be that you don't want to have too much skin showing. I know that's the kind of thing I would do. I would definitely wear a camisole underneath it just because that's me. And I wanted you to see, see that white there? That's the camisole. That's what you would see. Of I'm the just going to come in a little bit. Oh, do you come thing. in? That's the bit of the camisole you'll see there. This side really should sit, you know, on the shoulder like this. But bear in mind, you can kind of move it around. It's a, a movable feast. And on the other side, I can just turn that around, you'll get a tiny bit more because this one falls off the shoulder. And at the back, we've got this fabulous draped back. You can see the white there, that's the camisole. Now I've put the camisole on here because, as I said, Oops. not everyone, oh, are you jiggling? <laughs> yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy's all a jiggle today, I can tell you. Um, not everyone wants to show a lot of flesh, and that's fine. Um, I would definitely wear a cami underneath this, and if you want to, uh, or rather you prefer not to go without a bra, here is my handy hint for you. Put some lingerie loops in, so halfway through here, and this one on the edge, and attach them like, onto your bra strap, and they'll stay there. So you can wear a bra, you can wear a camisole, you can wear both if you wish. Uh, you can wear one of those camisole bras, you know, there's the two things together, uh, underneath this, and it'll look fine. Now, this, as I've done it, is just a very plain, uh, kind of bubblegum pink uh, interlock knit. And it looks great, and it'll look really, really good uh, with white things, because it's a very clear colour, uh, or neutral, like kind of beige chino colour beige things. And uh, I actually have a wedding to go to in a couple of weeks on the beach, and I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to be my outfit with some kind of white bottom. Um, so, that's the sleeveless version, and you can see it's a really nice kind of fresh easy little top and you know really for the hot weather for going out in the evenings something to just slip on it's great but now I'm going to show you how to make it and I'm going to do this one is going to be the sleeve version so let me show you around here and show you okay so this is the part where I'm going to show you the pattern the actual pattern and uh, those of you who are eagle-eyed which is kind of most of you will notice that we have what's known in the ter in the trade as continuity issues i.e. we videoed the whole tutorial yesterday and it was only when we came to edit it that we realized uh oh a part of it had gone horribly wrong and the horribly wrong bit was Jeremy didn't push the on button when he should have done so we have to redo this little chunk of it again but actually that's okay because while I've, I've already made up the garment and you'll see that at the end and um, I've, uh, I'm now using the pattern piece to show you, but that's actually a bit easier because I've been able to scale it down and print it off half size, so you can actually see it a bit easier without me waving bits of fabric around. So, I'm going to show you this and I'm going to talk it through with you. And the first thing you will notice is that yes, it is in fact a rectangle. Yes, it is. And I know I'm going to get emails from people saying, seriously, you're selling us a, a rectangle as a pattern? To which I say, yes, yes I am, and I'll tell you why. Um, this rectangle, it has to be at certain proportions. You can't just like whack a retail a rectangle together and hope it's going to be good because it won't be. Certain proportions and the armholes, these circular things here, 
have got to be the right size in the right position. And the other things that are important are these. I'm which just going to come out that tree. Yes, you do. Zoom in. away. See those there? Those are your pleat placement marks. That's the kind of middle of the pleat. That's one stitch line. That's one, one stitch line. Those have to be in the right position and the right depth and everything. Just everything has to be right about them because that's one of the main things that makes this fit. And down here, you'll see those are marks where your ties are going to be. Now, the pleat marks will be marked on the outside of your garment, on the right side, and these will be marked on the inside. Don't do what I do and use a pencil or a pen. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, use pins. It's much better. So, that's your... Um, that's your basic pattern piece. And like I say, I know there'll be people who'll be like, hmm, well, it's just a rectangle. To which I say, I challenge you. Get a rectangle, see if you can draft this, because it's not as easy as it looks. It looks like a really easy thing. It is when you've done it, not when you're working on it. Um, and this is your sleeve shape. It's not the proper sleeve. This is half scale, because if this fit you, you'd be a very small person. And you can see, though, that it's basically just a shaped tube. I think parallelogram, could be wrong. Um, it does not have the raised sleeve head. You don't need it because the uh, top kind of goes over here and there's the uh, beginning of the sleeve. So it's easy enough. Now, let me just show you what you're going to be doing with this. Obviously, you're going to cut out your armholes, obviously. And then this is the pleat part, and here is what you do. If you take your middle, your middle line, that's the middle of it there. You don't have to crease it, but I am because I'm using paper. And then, see that line there? Matches that line there? That's what you're going to sew through. So, of course, I'm not sewing paper. There are certain things I draw the line out, and that's one of them. Okay, so we're going to sew that. Now, I sit up and flatten this because, of course, our pattern paper is quite sturdy, as you know. No, it probably can't. Anyway, this gets flattened down, squished, and that's your main fitting part. That is what you're going to do first. I mean, you might make up your sleeves and what have you, but you're going to do this first. If you try and do this at the end, you can do it, but it's a lot harder. It's a lot more fiddly to get into it. So you're going to do your pleat first, and then you're going to continue. Now, in the rest of the tutorial that we filmed, I know because I've seen it, um, I go ahead and actually do it. And you will see it's a very simple one, but I'll quickly talk you the sequence of events. Pleat first. Sleeves if you're using them. If you're not, what the hang? Ties on. And then you will do it right sides together. You're going to sew a little seam across here, the top edge, and then you're just going to hem around here, around there, and around the bottom. And that is your top done. So now you can watch the rest of it and actually see me put it together. And it's very quick and very easy, and um, at least you've seen what the pattern pieces look like. What did you say, 45 minutes, soup to nut, uh, cutting you know out and it, making? It really was. It was like, four, I think, 40, 45 minutes. That included me cutting the, 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 the garment out and making it and pressing it and being all nice and juicy and lovely. So yeah, 40 minutes, really. And... and I must tell you, much as I do a lot of sewing, I'm not the fastest sewer in the world. I don't want to just crash it through. I actually want to, you know, make it look nice. So for somebody who's reasonably competent, honestly, 40, 45 minutes, you're good. If you're a beginner, a true, true, true beginner, maybe an hour. It's not hard. So have a look at the rest of it. And we are back. Yes, indeed. Now, I've just rushed off and I've done, I've basically done my sleeves. There's my sleeve. It's not very exciting, I know. Um, and I've actually inserted one of them. So... There is the sleeve, and you can see it's just, it really is just a shaped tube, there's really no big deal about it. So that's easy enough, and I've also, knocking the other one on the stand, I've also done the pleat, and I've top stitched the pleat into place. Now, you can top stitch it in place, you can hand stitch it invisibly underneath, you can leave it to go where it wants, it's really your call. I like it nice and flat, but that's just me. Um, and you can see here I've put this one with a pin on it, but underneath it's kind of stitched in place. So it's really your call on that one. And now, we're gonna put the ties on, I'm going to show you how to put those on because it's very simple, but you need to do it right. And then it's just a matter of kind of one seam, a lot of hemming, done. Okay, here's what we're going to do. On the inside, I mean, you'll see these marks on the pattern. There's marks for your ties. And uh, there's two little dots. You probably can't see them. Dot, dot. They're there. Now, here is the best way to do this. When you are adding your tie, can you see this bit, Jeremy? Yeah. Okay, that's the hem. Just, okay, just, that's, that's the it, just pull it towards you a little bit, would you? Okay. Thank you. That's the bottom, this is the back, and out here is the centre front. Obviously when you're doing the other tie, you're going to flip it the other way. And you start by having this facing towards the centre front. Okay, so pin it into place. And I'm trying not to pin through the tablecloth that's on here, because that would be kind of stupid. Okay. 
pin that into place. Okay, like that. Now you're gonna sew it down here, and then when you've done that, you're gonna push it this way, and you're gonna sew it again through here. So you've got a nice, neat finish. All the raw edges are tucked away. So that's how you put your ties on, and they're gonna be left like this. So they kind of go flat. And you notice with this, I've done like a diagonal uh, cut on here. That's because this ribbon tends not to fray. I mean, cutting on the diagonal tends not to fray anyway. This is really the best finish for it, so I always cut it on the diagonal. So that's, you're gonna put your ties on, Obviously, I'll have another sleeve in by then. And then here is what you will do. You will fold it in half. Oh, yes, you will. This is the center front. This is the center back. This is the top edge, neckline. And you will see there's a little notch. I'll put it up to my nose. Can you see that? Right, I'm going to come notch. right in. You can okay. come right in. There's a notch right there. I took a big chunk out of this one so you can actually I got see you. it. Okay, that's the notch. You're going to sew these two together from this notch to this, this is the centre back. That's your only seam on this, really, it's your only proper seam. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna sew that together, press it open, and then you're gonna hem this edge, and you're gonna hem all around these four. I'm gonna go and do that, and then you'll find that the top is done. Oh yes, you will, and I'll show you how Hey, so, uh, we're kinda of done now. Yes, we are. Um, we've got our pleat at the front, we've got our sleeves in, we've got our ties, you see they're in here. Nice and neat. And we've hemmed all on our edges. Now, here's the thing. Um, normally, I would have made this on my overlocker, but my overlocker and I had an argument this morning, and for the moment, it has won. So I'm not speaking to the overlocker. I did it just on the straight stitch. Um, and the only time I needed to use a, a, a small zigzag is actually inserting the sleeve tubes. For the rest of the time, you can just use a flat stitch. So it doesn't actually need to stretch to fit. The whole point of a knit is for the drape. So now I've made it up, I'm going to put it on the stand and show you how it works. And you'll go, oh, that's really clever. Now, obviously, if you were getting dressed, you wouldn't look like this. You wouldn't be like a headless, uh, legless torso, but we're just doing this on the stand, so work with me. All right, so this short seam here, the only seam in the whole thing, that is your back neck. So this hole here is your neckline. So let's put it on over here like this. Now... Please bear in mind, of course, that we haven't got arms in this stand, so it's a little bit difficult to see exactly how the arms fill it, but trust me, they do fill it. They really, really do. Okay. So, let's pull this tight at the back. Using the ties? Using the ties. I'm going to sweep it around while I do it, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay, so, if I pull that up out of the way, you're going to tie the ties as neatly, you know, as tightly as is comfortable for you and there's no kind of right or wrong here. It's a matter of, you know, what fits you best, what feels best on you. You can do it in a bow, you can do it in a knot, you can do it however you wish. I do like this cross screen ribbon though because it's quite kind of crisp and it looks really good. Okay, so when you do that, of course, you get this kind of waterfall effect at the back. The whole point of it. Let me just settle this at the front. Oh, it's actually looking quite nice. Oh, quite nice already. Um, it's supposed to kind of scrunch off to one shoulder, uh, kind of like oh, this. Now, the nice thing with this is, especially the one with the sleeve, it's kind of like a, a new take on the classic striped T-shirt. If you've watched any of our videos, you know I have a slight obsession with striped T-shirts. Um, and I'm always looking for new ways to do, like a new striped t-shirt that isn't the same as all the other striped t-shirts I've got, the many I've got. Um, so this is a really good kind of modern take on it. Obviously you can put a pin here if you wish, something groovy, something modern, or not. It looks really cool as it is. Um, the trick with this one is, you don't want it too tight to the body. It won't actually allow you to go too tight to the body because it's cut quite straight on here. Um, but again, wear it with a cami or, or not. Now I've made both of these, the pink one you just saw and this one, in like an interlock weight. So it's not heavy, heavy, but it's, it's got a little bit of heft to it. If you want to go for a lighter weight fabric, uh, something like those like rayon burnouts or something, or, or a modal or something that's very, very lightweight, you will almost definitely need a camisole underneath it because those things are see-through, and I don't want you getting arrested on my behalf. Thank you very much. So uh, you can make this in pretty much any nick you'd like, as long as it's got some drape. doesn't really need stretch, does need drape. really, really needs drape. And I would say it'll look best with um, very simple bottoms, like a pencil skirt below the knee, like a quite a slim pencil skirt, um, a Marrakesh pant, a cigarette pant, kind of anything. Really, really nice way to make you a new uh, groovy t-shirt that's very, very quick and easy. And if you are ever 
in the position to teach somebody to sew, this is a great one to start with because how easy is it? So easy. Also available as a download now. It is also available as a download. Now, here's the thing with the download. With something like this, let's, let's give you a, a, a fantasy scenario. Um, you come home from work one night and you've got a note from your beloved or you get a phone call. Meet me, we're going out. Oh God, I haven't anything to wear. Well, I swear to you, you could download the pattern and have this made within an hour and a half. I promise you, you could have it done. That's, that's allowing for you to like stop and have a cup of tea, come and make a phone call and do your lipstick and stuff. I promise you, hour and a half soup to nuts if you were downloading it. I actually took, I think, how long did it take to sew this up? About 40 minutes? Not even that. that. Well, that's 30, including 35, the cutting. Yeah. That's including the cutting because it's a rectangle with circles. Um, so it is very, very easy to make. And that's the reason why we call them fast and fabulous. They're really quick, they look fantastic, and you need to make them now.